Hey everybody. Uh, today you can see on the screen what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a relatively quick converting to vertex form by completing the square. Okay. Yeah, as you can see, we're going to go through two different types of functions to kind of see a couple different things that can pop up. Okay, here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through both of these side by side on the screen. I'm going to do a solution to problem one, and then I'll do problem two. That way, I think we should cover a lot of the things that should pop up. So let's work our way through one. If I'm going to complete the square on that, I need to change this function into a perfect square. So it's a bit of a process. It's an algorithm. What I'm going to first do is I'm going to factor out from both terms that contain the variable that leading coefficient. So you'll notice I factored out a 2 from both my x terms. Now that I've done that, what I need to do is figure out how to make the inside of those brackets a perfect square. And so what I really wish I had in there was a plus 4. So how did I get that? Well, what I did was I took half of the coefficient on my x, which was 4, take half of it, and then square it. So I take half of my 4 is 2, square it is 4. Nice. I want you to notice, though, that if I go through and I just write that down, I've now changed the value of my function. So... I cannot just add in a 4. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract it right out again as I go. What you'll notice by what I underline in red, that value is 0. So really all I did was just add in a 0. I did not change the value of the function. Okay, my problem though is, if I get rid of that red underline, you'll notice what I have inside of my brackets is not a perfect square. I want that trinomial to be the only thing inside. So what I need to do is now expand out that last constant. So for me to get it out of the brackets, I need to multiply it out. And so 2 times that negative 4 is a negative 8. Now what I can do is I can factor my perfect square trinomial and simplify on the outside. So if I had to go through and find the vertex of that parabola, I now have that vertex being at negative 2, negative 15. And I can see it from vertex form. Okay, there you go. That is completing the square. Now I'm going to argue to you that's probably the nicest version of completing the square. Now what I would do, I want to walk through problem two so you can see maybe something a little uglier that could arise. If I go through that exact same algorithm, so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little wavy line down the middle there. If my first action is I want to factor out from both terms that contain the variable, that three, I notice it does not divide nice and neat. So this is one of the situations that can arise. When I factor out that 3, that's going to leave me with a fraction on the inside. Okay, I'm going to just slide that over a little bit to give me a little bit of room on the right to do a little work. Now what I'm going to do is I need to figure out what value that I am going to add and then subtract that's going to give me a perfect square trinomial in there. So what do I do? I need to take half of that value, that's the coefficient on my single x. Half of that value means multiply it by a half. That is going to give me negative 5 sixths. But then I need to take that negative 5 sixths and square it to give me 25 36 the amount that's going to give me a perfect square. So... I need to add in my 25 36 There's my perfect square. But I have to subtract it right off again so I don't change the value of my function. And there's my plus 4. Okay, looks a lot uglier than the previous one. Okay, now I finish off my algorithm. 
I don't have my perfect square trinomial in there. There it is. I got that extra 25 36 So what I need to do is now expand that out of my brackets. So that's going to leave me with my perfect square trinomial. Now, when you go and you multiply three times your negative 25 36 you could end up writing negative 75 36 but that fraction's not reduced. So what I would love for you to see is let's just cross-reduce at the same time. So when I multiply that 3, I could reduce that to 25 twelfths. Right? I could divide a 3 out of my 36. And then, of course, I still have the plus 4 on, on the end. Okay, I can do two things. I can now factor that trinomial, so I know that I'm going to get an x minus, and there's the half amount that we found earlier, the negative 5 sixths, right? For me to get the value inside my brackets, look up in the top corner, that's the amount I want. So there is my negative 5 sixths. And now what I can do is just clean up my value on the outside. You can write this down. I have to get a common denominator, so I'm going to turn that into twelfths. 4 becomes 48 twelfths. And I could now calculate negative 25 plus 48. I just want you to notice, though, that the way that that gets written quite often is it almost looks like minus 25 plus 48, which of course is incorrect. So be very careful about how you write that. Be very careful. So if we can recognize that the 4 is going to become 48, what you'll notice is I might tend to put the positive value first. In most cases, that's just generally good form. And now there is no confusion that when I go through and simplify that value on the outside, I'm going to have a plus 23 twelfths. And so when the question says, hey, find the vertex, I can see that my vertex has an x value of 5 sixths and a y value of 23 twelfths. Okay, there we go. So I'm hoping that you're comfortable in knowing what the vertex is from vertex form and that this video can help you to give you two examples on how we complete the square to do that. Okay, I'm hoping that that helps you with your practice. Best of luck.